the standard product range. I will give you an overview of the standard product, the most important parameters of the product, and during the presentation when we come to the receiver, we will switch off to the receiver pairing and I will, some, uh, I will say some words to you, especially how it works, why we need it, and then you understand uh, the functionalities of sender, receiver and pairing. Okay, on slide four you can see an overview of our, cur of our standard product range, of our currently product range. And with the green sign, this means, or the green hake, is it hake? Yes, I think so. Check. A check, okay, a green check. Yes, this means these products are available now. So you can order it. And on the left button, you can see it's the generator mod module itself in monostable and bistable. Yes. This means for customer who have its own, who has its own electronics, they can use our generator module itself. Or yes, then we have the so-called generator generate RF generator module. It's combined the generator, the harvester, and the electronic for 868 or 950 megahertz, and with a corresponding antenna. Then the module with the housing, the so-called rocker uh, switch and the snap switch with different housing. Snap switch for, okay, special industrial applications and rocker switch for hand using applications. Yes, it's similar, the same uh, operating functionality with different housings. Then we have our evaluation kit where the rocker, the snap and our housed or packet receiver is inside. We will have a look later on it. Then we have our packed receiver. It's corresponding to the rocker switch, the snap switch and the RF generator module. We will see it later how it works. And in progress and coming soon, end of this year or during the next months are our two light switch modules with different RF protocol support and is our receiver stamp, our standalone stamp, which is integrated in the packed receiver currently. Okay, let's have a look to the products in detail. Okay, the RF generator or the generator monostable and the generator B-stable and the generator module. Okay, the size and the energy output are described in our data sheets and also in our technical specifications. Important is the lifetime of the generator itself is tested and released to one million cycle switches. You will see it on the next slide, it differs from the rocker and the snap. This is a, a very important parameter, yes, because this is also a like a unique selling point for our generator. But okay, consider this uh, one million switching cycles are depending on different parameters which are described in the technical specification. So when the user wants to use it and wants to reach one million, he has to consider that, uh, for example, the operating point of the generator is exactly uh, like described in our technical specification. And also the operating speed. We defined an operating speed, it's also in the technical specification, of 0 0.1 meter per second. This, is, these are the parameters we tested and released our product, our generator product. Yeah? And this is important. We guarantee 1 million operating cycles when all the parameters in the customer applications is exactly the same as in our specification. It's clear. When the user needs some adaptions or using some other operating point, then we have to say, okay, then we cannot guarantee the one million. It's clear, yes? Temperature range, okay, it's always from minus 40 until 86 degrees. And the frequency bands, 
only for the RF generator module is 868 MHz and 950 with ZF propriety protocol. That's important. Currently, we are not supporting other protocols. Currently, we fix to ZF propriety protocol. Yeah? Okay, RF distance. As you learned in our technical presentation, our F distance is a minimum distance. We guarantee. Our tests, our user tests, uh, we reached an our F distance in open space or auto over 800 meters. But it's an optimum environment. We go to an old airport where we have a long, long distance range and we have no influences and no interferences. We can guarantee and we reach a distance, for example, of 800 meters. In buildings, we guarantee 30 meters. But it also depending always on damping factors. Yes, when the customer said, hey, I have a building and I have only 20 meters, but I have three walls between sender and receiver, then we have to say, okay, three walls you cannot reach. Uh, or four walls, you cannot reach 30 meters. So it's always, yes, uh, not 100% assurance. But the best way to show our customer the good performance is put on a receiver on the desk, put on a rocker on a step and go outside. You will be surprised how good the RF performance is. It's really very good. I tried it more than one time at customer visits and they go outside of buildings, I go upstairs two levels and it worked. And it, the, custom, uh, the customers are very impressed of this. And you cannot compare it with, for example, with an, an ocean system. We are much more better in RF performance. Do it, take an evaluation kit, put it on your computer and go outside with the rocker snap or uh, take it to a customer assistance and say go outside 200 meters, 400 meters, and you will see it would work. It works, it, it, it works very, very good. And you can, it's the best way to show the customer the good RF performance. Okay, the package switched on slide six. It's a short overview. It's the rocker switch and the snap switch. And there is the RF gener generator module uh, integrated, you can see here. And here you see the, 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 the greatest difference between the RF generator module. We limited the operating lifetime to 100,000. And the reason for that is we limited the test procedures. Because testing every product to 1 million cycles costs a lot of test effort. It costs a lot of test time. And we said, okay, we assume that a rocker and a snap switch 100,000 life cycles is enough. Let's limit our test procedure to 100,000. We made tests over 100,000 and they worked until 200,000 without problems. But we said, okay, all our different test scenarios are limited to 100,000 and this is guaranteed in the technical specifications. If a customer would come and say he needs a snap switch with 300,000 and he ordered 500,000 pieces every year, then we have to say, okay, let's do a test scenario up to 300,000, let's make a test, let's release it to the customer, a special version, yes? But for a standard product, we say 100,000 is enough. And if there comes customer to you and say, I need 150,000 or 200,000, then come to us, we have to discuss it, and we have to decide it with our mechanical engineers, depending on the applications, if we release it or not. And if a customer, a very high potential customer, comes and say he wants a lifetime over 500,000, okay, then, maybe we have to do some new tests and test scenarios, okay? That is the point I would give to you. It's only a question of limited test resources. Otherwise, we test it to one million, I cannot give you a green check on the products because our engineers would test. 
the product until now. Okay, frequency bands, important, the same as the RF generator module, 868 and 950 for the US. And we have also approvals for this product for Europe and US. So the products are free. You can sell it. And we are using also ZF propriety protocol. Okay, range protection is the same. Okay, then package receiver. Why we are using ZF propriety protocol? We need a receiver for the customer because we are not using a, RF, a standard RF protocol where receivers are available on the market from other manufacturers. We are using ZF propriety protocols. Therefore, for our standard senders, we need a receiver. And why the reason was why we don't know what is the best receiver for all the different customers or all the different market requirements. We decided to create a receiver housed in a, in a, in a packaged in a housing and offer different interfaces in the hope that we cover the most of the customer requirements on the market. But in the discussions with different customers, I learned every customer needs another interface we haven't on our receiver. But it's impossible to cover all these requirements. So we offer a standard receiver with different interfaces and customer have to accept it. It's so. Okay, and the different the interfaces we will see later a little bit. Uh, the interfaces are, for example, a relay, where you can switch, for example, a short LED lamp. As you can see here, yes. We have bus interfaces, for example, RS232 or RS485, and we have digital output that customer can connect another PCB with a microcontroller, for example, and control the power board itself. And we have also a USB interface. You can connect your receiver on the computer over USB. The USB interface will power the receiver, or you can have a short, a very short uh, PC application and can run your receiver on the PC application and can see the incoming signals. On the slide 8 you have an overview of the different interfaces and an overview of the different let's say mounting versions we have. Yes and you can see here the PCB and included on we called it power board because there is a power supply and different interfaces we integrated the RF stamp PCB and on the receive on the power board there are different connectors or relays or 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 yes or pin connectors which we can depending on customer requirements we can leave or keep and in this table you have the possibilities yes of all the different versions for example you have here two different versions of PCB. One is the 868, another is the 950 version. You can see it. Okay, here I have to add it in the table. And so you can hear, okay, you can mount on, for example, a relay or you can leave a relay. You can mount an RS232 or you can leave it. You can, for example, a bus interface mountain or you can leave it. You can put on a USB micro connector or you could leave it. You could integrate a wiring antenna, this, or you could use an SMA antenna. This is a connector where you connect an external, could connect an external antenna and so on. So it would be possible to create different versions of the receiver for different customers. But Please consider, currently we have, we have installed in our production system this standard receiver. When we have to create another one for another customer, it takes a little bit time to install it in our production system. 
between two months or so, yes? So please consider it. So it was receiver and rocker snap. They are combined together because they are using the ZF standard protocol and you need for a, a rocker, snap or RF generator module always our receiver. Or another option could be we give a customer our ZF protocol definition and the customer programmed this protocol on his own receiver could be also an option. But this, the requirement for this is the customer has experience in electronic engineering and in electronic uh, hardware engineering. But it could be a possibility to give the customer the protocol specification and he designed his own receiver. The next category is our light switch modules. Yes, the light switch modules are 100% mechanical compatible to the an ocean modules. This is very important. Though you can, we guarantee that customers who are integrated an ocean, already integrated an ocean modules in their light switch program, they could exchange the an ocean module exactly to our module. They haven't, they haven't changed all the mechanical parts of the light switch frames, of the light switch blinds and so on. So it's exactly mechanical, 100% compatible. Okay, the lifetime is also limited to 100 cycles, but okay, it's for a light switch module, absolutely enough. Normal light switches, I know it in Europe, has lifetimes about 60,000. I don't know how was the lifetime specified for light switches in the USA, but 100,000 for a light switch module is absolutely enough, I think. The temperature range is not so high as for rocker and snaps. It's limited to 45 degrees because also I know it in Europe, light switch, common light switch modules are also, also limited to 45 degrees. This is a point, I don't know how it is, is in the state. Yes, but maybe it's not so high as for rocker snap. It's not 84 degrees. In the maximum, it could be 55 or 60. But this is a point you have, to, you have to discuss with customers when you are in discussion with. What is the temperature limit to the upper temperature? Okay, frequency bands. Frequency bands is now the flexible part of the light switch module. Frequency bands and protocols. You see, we have two different kinds of light switch modules. We called it one-way push button and two-way push button. On the next slide, I will describe what is the difference between. Currently, we are nearly ready with implementing of the an ocean protocol inside our electronic. As you, maybe as you know, an ocean described their protocol specification and made it public to an international standard. So it's possible for everybody on the world to implement an ocean protocol and fulfill this standard. The only problem could be that Every an ocean product has integrated a so-called an ocean ID. And this an ocean ID you only will get when you are a member of the an ocean alliance. So products which are not member of the an ocean alliance would have a problem because okay you can choose an an ocean ID a free an ocean ID but you could have the problem, there's another product in your surrounding, which is an original an ocean, could have the same an ocean ID. You cannot, it's, 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 the risk is not very high, but it could be. What, uh, we solving the problem with this, we are using a microchip inside our an ocean electronic, and the manufacturer of the microchip is member of the An Ocean Alliance, 
and he had he got from the an ocean alliance a range of numbers using for his chips so when we are using this chip in our an ocean electron we have an original an ocean id inside so it's no problem for us okay and we are working on these two products are in progress also the Sigby, creating a light switch module which is compatible to Sigby and working on 2.4 gigahertz. Remember, Sigby is 2.4 gigahertz. And we are also we could also offer a light switch module with ZF propriety protocol. But the question is, is this a, a customer need? Because for a ZF propriety protocol, we would also offer a ZF receiver. Okay, for good it would be, uh, for us it would be very good. We sell two products. But for customers he said, oh no, he has already an ocean receivers, Zigbee receivers, or a own receiver. I don't know. So the question is, make it sense to create a light switch module with a ZF propriety pro protocol. It would be possible. But the question is, make it sense. But Zigbee, yes, it makes sense, absolutely. I think it's very, very popular, especially for the, in the US and in Europe, it will be more and more popular. So we started in May, the development for the, for the Zigbee, uh, Zigbee Electronic, and we plan that beginning of next year, we will bring a ZF light switch module with Zigbee. Okay, on slide 10, there is a short overview of the functionality of the light switch modules. We differ between one-way and two-way button. The difference is a one-way button, you can press only in the lower position and then the switch releases back and a two-way button you can press in the upper and in the lower position and then the switch releases back. I will, uh, I jumped to the slide 13. On slide 13, there is the light switch module for the KNX protocol. Remember, KNX was a home automation protocol, especially for Europe. It became more and more popular also in the States and also in China. But currently it's very, very popular in, in Europe. And remember also to the diagram, to the very, very long green diagram of the KNX telegram. KNX, supporting KNX telegram is really a challenge. And this product doesn't exist uh, on the market. And this is really a unique selling point to bringing a energy harvesting light switch supporting KNX RF directly and this will be the next product before Zigbee light switch module because we are started the development very very early and will bring it in the spring uh, in the in the autumn the next months okay also and on slide 16 the problem is for KNX RF and why it is so important or the advantage is so high. All KNX devices will be configured in a so-called KNX ETS configuration software by the installers and by the engineers. And for programming the KNX devices, the program procedure takes a very, very long time. And this very long time for programming procedure, you cannot support with an energy harvesting system. You need a battery for this. And the compromise for energy harvesting and KNX is we created a so-called battery adapter, which you can switch off, switch on the module and support the module do, during the con the configuration procedure with a battery. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible to configure the switch. And this is a compromise, but 
You need this adapter only one time, the first time you configure the switch, and then you can put it on the wall and it works energy out -talk. Okay, on slide 17, there's an overview of our evaluation kit. And as I told you, the evaluation kit is a very, very good presenting product to presenting customers, our RF performance, and also for the customers to make the first experience with the products. He can make a design in, he can make a, a application tests inside the applications, he can do everything. He's integrated a rocker, a snap, and also a volume model of our generator. So he can make, if he's interested only in the harvester, he can do some design in tests, design in procedures. There is the packed receiver with the outputs and a USB cable. And if he wanted to work with the with the PC software, you have to, he has to download the software from the internet. So all the links are integrated in the manual and he has to download it from the internet, the driver and the software. Good, and we prepared several documents for customers, our sales tools, we made some application notes for the customers, good overview of our product range.